Today we'll continue work on the probability purpose. <laughs> uh, all right, so our first problem, let's begin with a, a little bit simple one, okay? We have a four packages that are delivered to four houses, one to each house. If these packages are randomly delivered, what is the probability is that exactly two of them are delivered to the correct houses? Whoa, okay, so here's a question. You have a four packages <clears throat> delivered to each of the houses, okay? What is the probability that uh, uh, exactly two, not more than two, not less than two, exactly two of them will be delivered to the correct houses? Okay, okay you understand the question now, right? You can work on that. Four packages. Uh, everything's random, okay? So I don't need to write down. I'm delivered to four houses, okay? Okay, one for each. Okay, so you have a, uh, okay, so here's the point, right? So you have, you can put the numbers here, one, two, three, four. Also four packages, also one, two, three, four. Now, if you randomly put, okay, these four packages, <laughs> right, over there, so the denominator will be four factorial. The question is, what is the number of desired outcomes? Okay. okay. Right? So you have to figure it out. Like maybe two goes to two, one goes to one. Then Three and four should be switched. Otherwise, it's not like exactly two. Two of them are, uh, to, uh, are delivered to the correct houses. <sighs> All right. Okay, how do you, how do you, yeah, how do you figure out this? All right, my question would be a slight different. I say, how many, okay? Uh, my question is, uh, uh, how many uh, 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 match the pairs of houses? Okay, you know, a package should be matched with the house numbers, right? Okay, so how many how many pairs of numbers matches was uh how many uh pairs of packages uh match the was Houses. Okay. Okay. And uh, well, so you just need to select. What I'm going to do is that. Okay. How can I deliver uh, the packages? Right. I randomly pick up a pair of houses. For example, two and four. Then I deliver two to two, four to four. So as a two. 
must be switched. Okay, so this is the equivalent to saying that how to find the number of pairs of a, of a houses. So those two houses can receive the correct packages. Got it? So if you think that way, okay, then you solve the problem. So you four houses, number one, two, four, three, four. You you pick up two, pick up a pair of of the houses, right? For those two houses that can get the correct packages. So how many pairs there? It'll be four factorial divided by by this, okay? But as the two houses, they must be switched. So there's no other choices. Okay, unique way to deliver the package to other two houses because they cannot get the correct packages. They have to switch those two numbers. Okay, so the second step is the choice is only one. The first step is to select a pair of houses for them to get to the correct packages. So that's it. So the answer will be one over four. All right. <coughs> okay. So this is a how do we get. So you have to you have to think about the problem in a different way. Equivalent but different way. Then you you can solve the problem. All right. Okay, my next question is very simple. Uh, my question is very simple. So for example, if you, you know, uh, suppose a very similar one, right? If you, if you meet some patient, some person with coronavirus, right? the chance you will get it will be one fifth. So the question is how many people with the virus you have to meet in order, for example, the probability to get infected will be at least a three fourth, something like that, okay? And, uh, and then uh, and then this is a probably, it's a probability problem, but, uh, but they, it become a number theory problem. So here's a similar problem. Okay, I can change the word, right? When John, okay, takes pictures, okay, and they are, those pictures turn out with probability one fifth. But sometimes succeed, sometimes not, right? Was the probability one fifth, and he wants to take enough pictures so that the probability of at least the one turns out is at least three fourths. So how many, how few pictures can he take to accomplish this? Cut it. Okay, it's a very similar to when the John well, you know, right? John meets people with virus and uh, and he got infected there was a probability one fifth so how many people he has to meet so that at least there is three fourth of the chance he can get a virus <laughs> it's not okay we're not going to do it but we can calculate this okay so so yeah he she he wants to take enough pictures okay, so that the probability of at least one turning out is at least three-fourths. My question is, how few pictures, so what is the minimum number of pictures can he take to accomplish this idea?
Đấy. So take a picture. One, two, three. All right. <clears throat> Sometimes when you click, this is bad the camera, right? You only get, you know, one one over five chances you get a picture. Okay. And uh, how many times you have to take? Okay. Right? So you guarantee there is a three fourth. So this is just a product rule. Okay. Applying to the probability. Okay. You take a sequence of a picture, okay? You take a sequence of picture. Uh, the probability of not tuning out is you have to do the opposite way. The probability not of not turning out is four over five. Well, I have to look at this first. Not turning out is four over five. It's one minus a one fifth. So now you're assuming John takes n pictures. Okay. So what is the probability no of them turning out? Okay. So John takes n pictures, okay? Uh, then let's look at the probability. We are using the product rule there. The probability of no then turning out is four over five to the n, okay? What is the requirement? The requirement is that we, the reason we have to look at the four over five here is because we are looking for the probability of not turning out, okay, is less than or equal to one fourth. Okay, think about that. We have to, yeah, we have to understand the problem first. So we want to find the probability at least one, at least, okay, this is a harder to, at least one turning out is at least a three fourth. So that means if you're able to find the probability that no of them is, you know, at least the one means it could be at maybe one, maybe two, maybe three, right? So there's so many cases there, it's harder to figure out the probability. So you can do the opposite the way. So what is the probability that no of them turning out, okay? What is the probability no of them turning out to be less than one fourth? So the probability of at least the one turning out is at least a three fourths. Uh, the up, yeah, the other direction is should be, yeah. So this number, okay. Uh, this number, yeah. So this number by requirement, the probability of no of them is turning out should be less than or equal to a quarter. Okay. Yeah, quarter is one minus three over four. Okay. Yeah, let's go back to the, you know, we want to find the probability of at least one turning out, right? Now it's easier to find out probability that of a no of them turning out. No of them turning out should be greater than, uh, it should be less than, because otherwise it's at least greater than, right? So that should be less than at the most, at least become at the most one fourth. Okay. As long as you set up this inequality, then you try to get. Uh, uh, the smallest n satisfies this inequality. Then you step by step and you find out that six is greater than a quart, but four over five to seven is less than a quart. So that means when n equals six still does not meet the requirement, n should be equal to seven. When n equals seven, then it's guaranteed as a probability 
of no of them turning out is going uh, is going to be uh, less than a quarter. Okay. Well, that's. I think the difficult part of this problem is to understand uh, understand this sentence. Okay, and how to use that condition when you see remember when you see some question like that what is the probability of at least something happen then you should do solve the probability problems uh is the opposite way just say no of them turning out okay and that make it easier to solve then uh once you get that yeah you can change it to another problem, just opposite way. Okay, no of them. Like, uh, for example, I, 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 I flip a coin, right? If I flip a coin, what is the twelve times? What is the probability that at least the one, one coin land, headed? At least the one coin land, right? Then if you if you do the problem directly. You will have to okay, when it you know once you know one one coin right shows up the head, and two coins shows up ahead. Then you have you know, then uh, there's so many different cases. You have to add them together. So why not just find the probability that no of them landed ahead, landed the heads. Then you, if you calculate that probability, then you can solve the problem. All right. Yeah, our next problem, uh, we uh, we are going to use a, a tree uh, tree uh, product rules and addition rules combined. Okay, a magician designed an unfair coin so that the probability getting ahead on a flip is sixty percent. Okay, and the way you put you know to a table. I, I I don't know how to design it, but that's the way. Ahead. Okay, if he flips the coin three times, what is the probability that he uh, uh, what is the probability that he flips more heads than tails? More heads than tails. Okay, that's a that's a that's a question. Okay, so here's a here's a probability. Okay, so a magician. Right, and uh, design the coin so special so that so the probability of getting a hat on a flip is sixty percent. Okay, so right now he flip. If a flip a coin, uh, yeah. If he flips a coin, the coin, okay, three times, okay. So the probability to get more heads should be very small, okay. Uh, well, it's three times, right? It cannot be two. All right. So this is a. I here's a coin. Okay, you flip a, three coins. Each time you have a more chance to get heads. But this is another question. This question is you want have a more more heads than tail. So that means what is the probability you get three heads? What is the probability you get? Yeah. So in other words, you what is the probability you get at least two heads? Right? Because more heads than tails. That means you get two heads or three heads. Right? So that is a <clears throat> that's a possible, but maybe uh, uh, I think it's a slightly more than a half the chance, right? But not uh, maybe not true. 
okay? Because each time, yes, I have more chance to get uh, uh, get a uh, get ahead, right? But if you want to get more heads, at least two heads on three frames, maybe the chance is less than fifty percent. Maybe I just said maybe. Okay. For example, if I flip the coins seven times, okay, what is the you know the probability to get six heads? I think it's definitely lower than one half. Okay, you have to, yeah. So, so let's look at this problem. Okay, can you solve it? Yeah, sixty percent is equivalent to three over five. Okay, you can replace that by three over five. That's the probability. Okay, I wanted to try first. I already explained to you the problem. <sighs> Someone give me the answer already. Good. William. <coughs> William has answer. All right. <coughs> Cindy, do you have answer? All right. So that's what I got. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at okay, how do you solve this problem? There we divide into the you know the possible cases here. So right, get H T T right, and the H T H, and H H T, and H H H. So there are four possible outcomes, <coughs> right? Four possible outcomes. So you just need to calculate the probability for each. The probability for the first one, okay, you are applying the product rule because first you get tail, what is the probability to get tail? Two over five. What is the probability to get H second time? Okay, so you get two over five, three over five square, right? Okay? And similarly, you will get the same probability. Okay, for the second one, for the for the third one, because this is a product, so you get three over five times three over five times two over five, you end up with the same. But for the last one, you have to get you have to get head 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 same every time. So this is the last one. Okay, then the total should be the sum of the three. Okay, two over five. 3 over 5 square and uh, 2 over 5, 3 over 5 square, 2 over 5, 3 over 5 square, and 3 over 5 to the cube. Okay, now to simplify this, what is the best way to do? Well, there's a common factor 3 over 5 square, and then you have a you multiply 2, right? Okay, so that is a quick way to. And this is gonna be nine, <laughs> okay? And uh, then, then it's eighty-one. That's one twenty-five. That's you can quickly get this answer. Okay, good.
good job. Okay, so we apply the product rule and uh, and the coach. Okay. Now you can also solve this problem use a tree. Okay, okay. You begin with uh, yeah. You you know you begin with the first time. You know you get they are actually divided into uh, how many how many of them, right? First of all, you get tail, you get h, right? Three over five and two over five. Now from here again. Uh, yeah, I'm not, yeah, it's not necessary to do that, okay? <coughs> yeah, it's, it's a too late, so it'll be complicated. I'm going to stop here. All right, so our next problem, uh, will be similar to this. It's sim about similar problems. I wanted to, Figure it out, okay. A standard, this is a standardized, okay. A standardized, a standardized is toast twice. Okay, what is the probability that I'll obtain exactly one five? So what's that? What does that mean? Uh, okay, we are, uh, we record the numbers in the order, right? And there are six choices each for each uh, each time, right? So you want to get the exactly one five. For example, you want to get this twice, right? You want to get something here five, or this is not going to be five, right? Another one is maybe first time you get a five, the second time you don't get a five. So what is a what is the probability of this outcome? Okay, so uh, I think the denominate is uh, is clear, right? It's just the six squares. Okay. Okay. So there's only two possibilities here. One is you count those outcomes, the second one is five, the first one is not five, that's just five choices there. Okay, the second one is the same. So it's gonna be 10 over six square. And after simplifying, it's gonna be five over 18. Then that's easy problem, right? <laughs> if you understand this. Uh, my another problem is, a box contains two coins with the head on both sides. Haha. Uh -huh. One standardized coins and the one coin was a tail on both sides. All right, so uh contains yeah, the, here's a here's a question. Okay, in uh, in a box, okay, in a box, I have a 
two coins was a head on both sides. It's a special coin, okay? And the one stand the coins, okay? And and the one coin was a tail on both sides. Now things become complicated, okay? A coin will be randomly selected from these four coins and they will be flipped twice. What is the probability? This is a condition of probability problem. What is the probability each of these two flips will be resulting in half? Okay, so here's a question. Okay. A coin is select and flip it twice. Okay. What is the probability that each of the two flips will be resulting in half? All right, so there's a possibility. Uh, if you get one of those two coins with two heads on the both sides, then you always get, right? You always, uh, uh, result, yeah, you get, you always get head. Each, each of the two flips will result in head, right? Clear, no problem. If you use a regular die uh, as a coin, then, then the probability will be much lower in order to get each of the two trips will be the resulting head, right? Okay. The last one. Okay. If the coin select, right? If this is this coin was a, was a tail on both sides, then you never get head. So uh, that's four coins. <coughs> the chance that you pick up a one is each time is is a. Uh, uh, yeah, it's it's random, right? So you apply the addition rule first. So the probability to get right to the coin was two heads on both sides, right? So that would be one of the. Uh, you know, this is uh, actually there are three groups here, right? Okay, two heads, double heads, right? Two H. This is an H and a tail. This is the tail and the tail, okay? So uh, the chance, yeah. So you can also, uh, let's let's do this. Okay, there are, there are four coins there, right? Four coins, two edge, okay? So you, uh, what you do is, you apply the addition rule here. So if we pick up a one, uh, if we pick up a coin with two heads, then the chance, okay, uh, what is the probability of that? It's caught, right? Plus a caught, but each time you always guarantee you get a head. But if we pick up the coin, the standard coin, the ch so the chance that you pick up the standard coin is one caught. But once you pick up the standard coin, okay, what is the probability you get uh, you get both heads when you twist twice? That would be that is the one court, okay? Because one half times one half. Okay. Now if you pick up if you pick up the coin with two tails, then no matter how many times you you flip. You never get head, so the probability is zero to get head. So this is a addition rule first, then the product rules. Okay, so the answer will be nine over sixteen. Uh, 
nine over sixteen. Okay, William, is, you're, you're doing this. You know, um, this probability is problem tonight. Okay, good. Okay. All right, let's uh, look look at uh, the next problem. A drawer contains three browns, two gray socks. The socks are taken out of the drawer one at a time. What is the probability that the fourth sock removed is a bra? Okay, so you have you have a drawer. Okay, contains three brown and two gray socks okay now you're going to remove one by one okay at each time so what is probability that the fourth one is is wrong So you draw, yeah, you have a, you know, you have a, uh, yeah, let's, let's, let me draw the, all right, you have a <coughs> three bronze and two grays. And you can do one by one, you take it out. So what is the property? The fourth one is gray. Okay. Okay, there are two different ways to solve. The first one is uh, uh, you you can put them in a row because it's, the order is very important, right? So you have how many possible different patterns you are going to get? Maybe here's a B, here's G, here's G, here's a B, and B, right something like that right so you have only two letters and those two letters if put in a row two three identical black b right two identical gray g if you put in a row so the denominator will be five factoria over two factoria three factoria okay this is a total number of possible outcomes but you are interested in the one only interested in the case when the fourth one is green okay that's a green that's a fixed so you have right now three b's and the one g you can use to put into those four places okay and what are the possible outcomes with this restriction on the fourth one okay i think the restriction for the fourth one will be they have a four right and the three identical letters that's all you need or not okay hold on black or brown the fourth one is brown, so it's brown, brown. Then I have a two bronze left, two Gs. Okay, so I should have a two factorial and two factorial. Okay, after you simplify, the answer will be three over five. 
Okay. After you simplify the real fact. So you have a your fixed B and you cannot change it. You have the fourth place. Then you have a four positions here. You have a two B, two G. Okay. And the random input there, but the but if we switch the two Bs, you don't see a difference. So that's why I have to divide two factorial. Okay. Well, you can also use a, 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 a tree diagram to solve this problem, but this is a, still a little bit more complicated. Some problems we have to do like that. All right. Right. Yeah, so let's take a look at the next one. Uh, let's talk about money, okay? Steve has three quarters, three nickels, three pennies. If Steve selects three coins at random and without replacement, what is the probability that the total value is exactly 35 cents? Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. So Steve is going to, yeah, randomly pick up uh, three coins, but the total he has is three quarters. Okay. And the three nickels. and the three pennies. Okay, so if you select the three coins, so what was our replacement? What is the property that the total value is 35 cents? Okay, if Steve selects three coins, What is the property that the total value equals 35 cents? All right. So first of all, how many coins here? He has nine coins. So denominate, yeah, you without replacement, three coins, right? Three coins. So you put in your row, it's fine. Now you can change the order, it's okay. So let's put in your row, right? One by one, okay? So the denominator is the number of all possible outcomes. Nine quarters. So it's nine, eight times seven. So this is a total number of uh, possible outcomes. Okay, how do you figure the numerator? So Steve has to pick up one quarter, two nickels, right? How to get 30, 35 cents? 35 cents, right? 10 plus 10, 35. Is there any other possible combinations? Probably not. Hmm? Okay. Yeah, think about the numeric. If I put a denominator like nine eight seven, that means that I count the order, okay?
So I think the only possible combinations would be one quarter, two nickels. But you can also get quarter, nickel, 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 quarter, nickel, and nickel, quarter. Okay. So here's the answer. So first of all, let's look at possible patterns, okay? Because we come to the order, otherwise the denominator will be not nine times three times four. And then you have Q N N and Q N, okay, N and Q. For each pattern, okay, how many possible uh, ways to get this, right? So you have to select one quarter first. So three quarters, so three. You, then you have to select two nickels, right? Right, you have to select two nickels. So one first nickel, you have two choices. That's three choices. Second nickel, you got two choices, okay? Total will be 18. Okay, and to do the same thing here, you have to select one nickel first, three choices, one quarter, three choices. Then second nickel, you only have two choices, so it's still 18. And the same thing here, three, two, and three, that's 18, okay? Total will be 18 plus 18 plus 18, so the answer will be three after you simplify it. 3 over 28. Got it? All right. All right. And, uh, and the similar type of problems I wanted to do here. So there are equal numbers of pennies, equal numbers, uh, 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 we don't know how many, right? Penny, nickel, dimes, quarters, okay, in a bag. Okay, so that's lots of, okay. So there are equal number of pennies that we put in the back, okay. So this is a penny, nickel, uh, and the dimes in the quarter, okay. Equal number each, equal number, okay. Uh, coins in, 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 in each, yeah, in each value, okay. So four coins I pulled out. One at one, and each coin is, is repressed before the next is drawn. Okay, that means that and every time you know you, you know you're not going to change it. Yeah, you can put it back. Okay, and uh, what is the probability that the total value of the four coins will be less than twenty cents? Okay, so here's the point. Okay, four coins. Um, pulled out right? one by one, but then each coin is repressed before the next coin is drawn. My question is, what is the probability that the total value is less than 20 cents? Less than 20 cents. Okay, so please work on this problem.
All right, so you need a, first of all, uh, right? You have to find out possible patterns, okay? Right? The positive patterns so you can get the money at less than 20 cents. So maybe you get penny, 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 right? Because once you get a quarter, then it's impossible. You have a, a more than 25, 20 cents. Then the one nickel, three pennies, right? Then you increase the two nickel, two pennies, right? It's possible, three nickels, okay, five, five, right? Plus one penny, okay? And uh, you cannot have a four nickels. Four nickels is going to be 20 cents. So that's impossible. Another possible is going to have one dime, three pennies, right? Can you have a two dimes? No. But I can one dime, one nickel, two penny. I think those are all the possible uh, combinations you can have. You can have a quarters in that. Okay. Okay, that's my hint. Continue. I think here you don't know how many total coins in each value, but that's okay. You can get enough, They're enough there, lots of them, right? So you can also only assume that's one quarter, one nick. No, you cannot, right? Because every time it's a replacement, you can take it out and put it back, take it out, put it back. So it does not have any impact on the next, le next step to pull out to the coin. Okay. Right. So what is the probability for each pattern shows up? Then add them together. Okay. So probability for each pattern, we have to apply the additional product, right? You want to get four PPP, right? And uh, yeah, you get four, four of them, right? Every time you get so each time you get the probability you get one P, okay? is one of the four, right? Because you have a P, N, V, and Q. Assuming there's only one four coin there, the chance you get one P is going to be a quarter, right? And uh, second time you also get a quarter, quarter. This is a chance. This is a probability, multiply them out, okay? Now what is probability for the second one? Well, this time is a bit tricky here. Uh, NPPP, okay, NPPP. It's a possible combination. How many possible combinations here? You could have a PNPP, right? Or NPPP, so total, See, the probability still you will get, you know, but then you have more choices that P, N, P, P, right? So you, you have to count how many of them. So that will be total, will be four, uh, total will be four factorial 
divide by four quarters, four numbers, right? And they divide by uh, divide by three factorial. Okay, so it's four, but that's just only four possible subcategories here, four sub patterns, right? Then the probability will be will be four times one quarter to the fourth power. This is only one quarter to the fourth power. Okay, and the same here. How many of them? How many different words you can spell out? Like MP, uh, MP for example, right? So you have uh, how many of them? You have uh, four factorial over two factorial and two factorial is six. Okay, but then you have six such outcomes, and then each one, uh, the probability is one quarter to the fourth power. Why one quarter to the fourth power? Suppose look at this one, NP, NP. What does the probability get N? One quarter. What does the probability get P? One quarter. What does the probability get uh, N? One quarter, right? So in order to get NP, NP, this probability would be one quarter to the fourth power. But you have a total six of them there, okay? So similarly, this will have a three and one P, so you get four, one quarter, right? And this is also have a three P, one D, it's the same, okay, like that. And the last one is, the last one is, uh, you have three letters. So you have a four factorial divided by two factorial, okay? Okay, so that is going to be uh, that is going to be three times four. It's twelve. Yeah, twelve. So it'll be twelve times a quarter of four. So finally, the 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 probability when you add them together, okay. Uh, you add them together, so you get uh, uh, the first one is one, okay. So it's one plus four plus six plus four plus four plus 12, each of them multiplied by quarter to the fourth power, okay? Yeah, so the answer will be 31, 256. So as long as you have uh, these four letters, uh, yeah, then you can figure the pattern. But then how many possible uh, combinations here? Yeah, you don't know, right? So you have to calculate in each category like this. If you understand this part, you, you know how to do the rest. Of it. Okay, whole total, you have four different uh, possible uh, sub-patterns. And each of them, the probability is shows up the probability is one quarter to the fourth power. So that's why I have to multiply four, okay? Uh, yes, right, so that's it. Okay, our next problem is also very interesting. Uh, so here's a picture, okay. So this is a picture. Okay, I have a, I have a two looms. That's a loom B, and uh, that is a loom A. That's a starting point. The one person you don't see that either go to the left or to the right. If you go to right, then they have a uh, two two tunnels to loom A, one turn to loom B. If you go to left, that's one turn to the loom B, two turners to loom A, okay? So it's like an underground, for example, right? So you don't see it. So what is a, a question here is, 
uh, yeah, this is a start point. Okay, this is a start point, the big start. Okay, you are here. Okay, so CS question <coughs> uh, if each vertex, each path is equally likely to be followed, okay, what is the probability end up in room B, not A? Okay. Is there, do you have any questions? Uh, answers? What's the answer? One third? No. No. It's not one third. How do you get one third? Quick. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, let me add one another one. Okay. Well, let me change it. Yeah, this one. Let's <laughs> make it a little bit different. All right. Yeah, so this is a, let's modify this part. I forgot to draw this path. Okay. So there are, uh, all right, so let's see. The probability going each, each direction, here's a one third, one third, one third. Here's a one third. This is like a tree diagram. Okay, so in order to end up in room B, you will go through here. You also go to this direction or go to that direction. Okay, so we are going to apply the addition rule first, the product rule the, for the path on the left is going to be the probability is going to be one third of square, the path in the middle. The path on the right. Okay, so that is what you get. Okay, and after you simplify it, it's going to be five or nine. All right, so our next problem. Uh, yeah, probably this is a, yeah, let's do the last one. This is a typical problem. We can use a tree diagram to solve it. Okay, uh, this is called the best of five series. We did it before maybe. Uh, a best of five series end up with a team wins three games, okay? So the probability of team A defeating team B in any of the game is given. Okay, this is a strong team or weak team, okay? So what is the probability that a team A will win the series, okay? So usually, why it's called the best of five? Because it end up with a five, no more than five. 
So the best file uh, ends when one team wins three games total. Then it's over, okay? So we know that the two teams here. The probability of team A defeating team B is given. Now this could be uh, in any game, okay? In any game. Okay, in any game is it could be one half, you know, they're equally good. It could be uh could be uh two thirds or it could be five or nine, four over five, four over nine, right? For example. So my question is what is the probability the team A will win this series? Why this called the best of five? Because at the most, that's a five times, five times run. Okay. The reason is, so example, if a team, if team A win, right? Uh, the worst case, yeah, is team A wins, team B wins, team B wins. It not, it not stop. Then team A, then team A. So maximum total five. But that's also possible. Team A win, team A win. So you stop the third round, right? And you can also have a stop at the fourth round, right? <laughs> so that's a so maximum is that this is a maximum, right? Number of the uh, of the games, okay? The so maximum number of the game. The smallest number of game will be three. So be three and a four, okay? So question is how do you solve the problem? Okay, this is a minimum number of the problem. Okay. You can do a, a, a direct way, you can also use a, a, use a, a, a tree dive. Okay, we call the multiple layer problem. I want to show you that method, okay? Uh, <coughs> because that method actually um, is a better. Uh, you can solve as a problems, okay? So the idea is, the idea is that if you, um, <coughs> if it's def if A defeats B, I write down A. If B defeats A, write A, I write down uh, B, okay? So there was a two, right? There are two uh, uh, possible ways to get possible outcomes, right? So you get A, let's get B. What is the probability? It's gonna be four over nine, five over nine, okay? You stop here, right? Then you continue, okay? Then you continue. So maybe you get A, then you get B, okay? So this is also four over nine. That will be, uh, 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 so I have to make the space large because I, I find out too many layers there, okay? So I'm going to uh, draw it, maybe get more space, okay? So that is A, that's a B, okay? Four over nine, five over nine. Then I got the next one. Suppose A wins, so are you on the left hand side? Then they have a four of a nine, and here's a five of them. Okay, but then maybe <clears throat> maybe there's another possibility, right? So you still get the second game, four of a nine A wins, five of a nine B wins. Okay, so now continue. Okay, and then get four of a nine. Here's a five of a nine. Now this side will be end, dead end, because already A 
when wins game three times cons continuously, right? So you stop here. But okay, that's getting more complicated, right? So let me check here A and B. Okay, let's see. If B, if this is A, A, B, then I have to continue. So A and the B. And the, so that's a stop, right? Because I have A, A, B, A. Then also have a B, B, A, A, B, B. Then you have A, then have a B. In either case, it's where stop. All right, so here, A, B, A, then B. Okay, so A, B, A, A, so stop. A, B, A, B. So you have to continue on this side, A and the B. Okay, so here, B, A, B, B. Okay, then I have A and the B. The B is stop, but the A have to continue. A and B. Okay, so either way, yeah. So you have uh, so many possible ways to get here. This is the A and the B. Okay, then the B, A, B, so not done yet. Then A, so you have three A. Then you have a B, right? Then this one, B, A, B, A, and the B. <laughs> okay, it's too crowded, I tell you. Okay, so so uh, so that the uh, oh my God, okay, okay B A A A then B A A B. So I still have A B A A and B. Yeah, okay. So six. So B A B and have A, and I think I have a B here, right? B, A, B, A, then have one A, then have one B. And then I think this one is stopped because this already win. Okay. Yeah, you see, just count how many, how many uh, A or how many B is there. If, it, if it's only got three A or three B, then you stop that, okay? Uh, yeah. So then the similar thing here, you get the B, so B, 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 3, B is already here, don't worry about it. Then you have A, then B, and 2A and 3B. So then you have A, then you have a B, okay? So in order to make sure A wins, then you have this, right? And this, and that, and this, that, oops, that, this that, that, that. Okay, you have to count on the probability of each possible pass, okay? So if you draw the picture here, it goes like that, okay? And then go in this way, okay? Right, and then you go this way, okay? Okay, I just want to see what, you know, along this tree, how do you calculate the probability? The probability is uh, uh, P equals, uh, you have to go through the first pass on the left, four over nine square, uh, four over nine, no square, no, four over nine cubic, okay? Then the next one is four over nine, four over nine, and the four, five over nine, and the, and the four over nine. So you always get four over nine, but then also get five over nine. And then you keep going, list all of them, okay? So the answer will be, the answer will be uh, uh, 7,808. The denominator uh, will be this number. So that's pretty strange number here, okay? You just add them together. When kick with the probability along each path, yes, this time we have five, uh, 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 five, layers as uh, a little bit complicated and if you have the paper is large enough you can draw all of the possibilities and add them together okay all the probabilities along each path then add them together okay 
because this, this happens either along this path or on that path or on the next path, you know, add them together. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, that is, uh, yeah, that is what I want to talk about today. Okay. And uh, so this is the end of the class. Uh, I hope you have a great future.